right, everybody. Welcome to the Trader's Lounge. It is another Sunday. I keep asking myself, where does the week go? Where does the week go? Um, one thing you know, it's Sunday, and we're trying to start a week, wondering what we're going to trade and all that other stuff. And then before you know it, the week's over. It really is absolutely crazy. Um, but welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Traders Lounge. To our registered students at Israel Keys Wealth Academy, welcome. To everybody else, the whole world, we just want to welcome you. We love you. Uh, whether or not you're registered with us, this YouTube channel is our gift to the world. We want to be a hub of global excellence for raising people who aspire to and succeed in arriving at uh, financial freedom, primarily by trading foreign exchange and other financial markets. Uh, that's really what it's about. So welcome to a, a, a tribe of like-minded individuals, and we are sure that you are going to have yourself a blast while you are here. Uh, very sure about that. And uh, first of all, just want to make sure that you guys can hear me loud and clear. So hit me up uh, to let me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Um, we start the week on a Sunday every week with this session. It's half podcast, half mentorship coaching session. It's just a mishmash of both. And that's fine uh, because we believe that success is primarily to be found between the ears. And so before you succeed in anything else, you've got to succeed in the space between your ears. And this is me bringing 13 years of experience as a financial trader versus stocks and shares. And then in foreign exchange at first, not too successfully. And then in the last six years, really, really successfully. Uh, and I'm bringing just tricks of the trade, mindset, uh, mentality, coaching, uh, the non-technical stuff, the non-candlestick pattern stuff, the stuff that no matter how good you are at picking the candlesticks, if you don't get this stuff, you either will not succeed or your successes will be extremely short-lived. And so this is the real stuff. This is the uh, This is the secret sauce, if you like. This is the, the stuff that separates the good from the great and the bad from the good. And so welcome. Uh, you could be anywhere on a Sunday night, and I'm glad that you choose to spend it with me. Uh, our vision here is to be a global center of excellence and a resource hub for financial education and wealth creation. Our mission is to build a tribe of financially free and empowered individuals who live fulfilled and impactful lives by equipping them with the knowledge and skills to create wealth in trading foreign exchange and other financial markets. And now with that being said, let us go. Let's dive straight in. Alrighty, so this week uh, on the Traders Lounge, we are talking about creating a wealth mindset or success, sorry, mindset. Now, uh, I said last week that I was going to be uh, speaking at an event for uh, a very good friend of mine that happened this past week on Tuesday. I was teaching with Coach Aaron at his Money Mindset uh, one week conference, which was an absolute blast. I mean, I had a, I had a great time teaching. I also had a great time hanging out and listening to a couple of the other speakers as well. Real good stuff. Uh, I gave everybody the 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 D-Low, the 411 in advance. If you registered in advance, you would have listened to and watched every single session live. 24 hours after they went live, they took them down. Now you've got to pay for an all-access pass. Uh, but I still think it's good value. So if you want to look at moneymindsetweek.com, the website I think it's called, an absolutely great, um, uh, great, what you would call it now, great value. Uh, and my session that week or last week was uh, a session I chose myself, a title I chose myself was building or developing a money mindset. Uh, and when I was thinking this week about the Traders Lounge, I felt like the way to go was to go over a couple of the concepts that I taught uh, during the week, but to refine them specifically for trading. And I chose the title success mindset 
as opposed to money mindset because the money will follow the success. Uh, as a trader, what you really want above all is success. And the second reason I chose this title was whatever you do, whatever your business, whatever your endeavor, this will work. One of the great things about trading, and I, I'm really grateful to God. I'm a person of faith. Many of you know, I'm really grateful to God because um, I believe in God. But that I mean, whether or not you do, that's irrelevant. But I personally ascribe this to a creator. I'm so grateful to God for teaching me or bringing me into the trading space outside the, the, the direct teachings on morality and character that I received from parents and home and, and church. Trading has been the singular most impactful activity in building my character and my reality that I have ever encountered. It has challenged my mindset, trained me to think, expose my limiting beliefs, and poked holes in the parts of my character that have been holding me back from success. One of the great things about trading is if you can succeed at it, it will carry over to every other aspect of your life. The skills, the disciplines, the mentality, and the mindset it takes to be a success trading the financial markets are transferable to any part of life. Uh, one of the most successful traders uh, and, and popular traders in the last 20 years is a man called Chris Laurie, who's a gold medalist, or was it a bronze? I can't remember if it was gold or bronze, but he was a medalist in bobsleighing at the Olympic Games 30 years ago. And the same discipline and dedication it took to become an Olympic athlete, he found out when he began to trade, he said, that it was all transferable because trading forces you. You can't fake it. It's real life feedback. Literally, you see how good you are directly in the market. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Monica, Natalia, Esther, everybody else in the comment section. Let's know who's here. Even if you're not a registered student, just let's know who you are. We want to just hang out with you. Uh, the Traders Lounge is a hangout spot where we just do, we just vibe, you know, good vibes, good energy, as you guys say. And so we're going to deal with developing a success mindset. Now, the first thing I want you to notice from this title on your screen is success is a mindset. Let me repeat. Success is a mindset. I'll repeat one more time. Uh, success is a mindset. For the last time, <laughs> success is a mindset. In essence, it first happens internally before it happens externally. As you will see in a second, you cannot succeed externally until you have first succeeded in the space between your ears. So that's the first thing I really need you to grab a hold of. The second thing I need you to grab a hold of, hey, good to see you, Crypto MJ. Come on in, come on in. The second thing I want you to see is this. This success that is a mindset is not an event, it's a process. It must be developed or built one piece at a time. And this is not just coaching rhetoric mumbo jumbo. You're talking to a man who has succeeded at multiple endeavors in life, including trading Forex and other financial markets. I'm going to give you today in over the next uh, 45 minutes or so or less, I'm going to give you the download, the secret source on a high level. Now, I can't promise to give you everything in 45 minutes. And I don't even want to because, you know, the deeper things you'd need to exchange some value with me, aka some coin. But I can give you a roadmap in the next 40 or so minutes that can set you down an irrevocable path to succeeding in everything you do. And trading financial markets will be one of the things that you succeed at. So without any further ado on a plumb, let's go. This is what we're going to deal with tonight on the Trader's Lounge. What is success? Socrates said, I believe it was Socrates who said that the beginning of wisdom is the definition of terms. Now, you know, I happen to believe what the Christian Bible says, that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But from a, from a natural perspective, that's correct. You cannot gain mastery over a thing you have not first taken the time to define correctly. We're going to look at what's a mindset 
I'm going to give you a couple, like just a couple of uh, stories of my own journey to get here. We're going to deal with the conscious and subconscious mind, the laws of attraction. And if we have time, we'll deal with your emotions as the language of your subconscious mind, if we have time. And we're going to deal with how you develop a mindset. Now, let us go. What is success? According to dictionary.com, these are the four definitions of success you find when you type in the word success into dictionary.com. A favorable, a prosperous termination of attempts or endeavors. In essence, the accomplishment of a goal. That's number one. Number two is the attainment. Now, this is more, you know, uh, obvious, especially if you're trading. It means you're looking for financial reward of wealth, position, honors, or something similar. A performance or achievement that is marked by success. In essence, if you say that was, uh, that recital was a success or that, that, uh, that live performance was a success. And then we also talk about a success as a person. In essence, I remember when I was, uh, I was in my twenties at the time and I was uh, working with my boss, uh, and a friend of his came into the office and spoke to me. And I was a young man at the time. And I'm, well, I'm still kind of young, but but we're talking now almost, I don't know now. We're talking, this was in, anyway, this was a long time ago. <laughs> this was about 15 years ago or thereabouts. Uh, and he said to me, you're a success. In essence, the spectrum of the definition of the word success ranges from what you do to what you become, to what your identity is. Let me repeat. Success, the understanding of success starts as something that you accomplish, right? That's number one on this on this screen. It then moves to the thing that you accomplish. It then moves to the action by which you accomplish it. And finally, success ends up as your identity. In simple terms, if you succeed long enough, you become a success. If you form a pattern or habit of succeeding, success goes from what you get to how you get it to who you are. And you arrive at a point where you are already a success before you start something. This is what I call the Midas touch, the sweet spot. There's people like this who everything they touch, you know many of them, you're jealous of them. You call yourself their friend, but you're secretly rooting for them to fail at least once so you don't feel like such a bad person. Anybody in the comment section want to be honest and acknowledge that there are times where you, you, you like this person, but you just wish they wouldn't make you look so bad by always doing well while you don't do so well. Well, they've become a success. It's now in the blood. It's, it's in the habit. It's a mindset. A mindset. In essence, you can develop a subconscious reality that naturally tends to successful accomplishment of whatever you set your mind to. On the flip side, there is a failure mindset where if you fail often enough and you get things wrong often enough, you develop a subconscious reality that naturally tends towards not accomplishing what you would like. Anybody in the comment section be honest enough to say that I can relate with that. That subconscious foreboding before you start something, that fear that tells you, well, you've ne you haven't succeeded at A, B, C, or D. What makes you think E is going to be different? Well, if you bring that reality to trading, it doesn't matter how much technical information we give you. Either here at Israel Keys Wealth Academy or any other form of educator or mentor, you can have the best mentor and the best training. And if your internal reality is wired towards failure, guess what you're going to do? Fail. All right. Let's keep on moving. Let's keep it moving. Now, the word success originates from the Latin word successus. 
some etymology here, some word study. And that comes from the verb succede, which literally means to come close after. The question now is, what does it mean to come close after? Now, if you think one of the ways the word succeed is used in the English language today is to talk about the type of the person who takes on a position or an office after someone else. So, for instance, Donald J. Trump succeeded Barack Obama as the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Powell succeeded Bernanke as the head of the Federal Reserve. Boris Johnson succeeded, uh, uh, I what is his name now, I had it and it's gone, uh, David Cameron, actually no, he didn't succeed Cameron, he succeeded Theresa May, who succeeded David Cameron as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. So, in essence, succeed literally means to follow after something, to, to step into the shoes where something used to be. Hmm. Well, you succeed when you arrive at a destination that you have pre-created in your internal reality. Success means you follow the already existing reality between your ears. In essence, if you don't predetermine the right destination first, your internal sat nav will take you to the default location. Now, just ignore the bottom half of your screen for a second. Let's talk about the top half. Just, just pretend like you can't see the part in bold for a second. Every human being has a set internal sat nav that is programmed to take you to a default location. And as it comes to the pursuits of life, that sat nav is either set to one of three, de well, one of four destinations. Destination one is fear and never trying. Destination four is successful engagement. In between, there is trying and failing, and then there is trying and being mediocre. Every human being's mind has one of these four destinations set as the predetermined default location. And I can spend one hour around you or less, probably 10 minutes, and figure out where your default location is. This is the interesting thing. That default location will usually apply to almost everything in your life. With the exception of things where you either believe you, so you could believe I'm a great footballer, and I, it, where football is concerned, your predetermined location is success. Because something convinced you you were good at it at some point in your life. But everything else in your life could be a mess. Or vice versa. You could be, by, by virtue, by nature, by default, great at stuff. But there's one thing that you're so afraid. Yep, Karen, that's what, exactly what I mean. By sat nav, satellite navigation system. I'm talking about your inner guidance system or what I call, I'll show you in a second, your subconscious mindset or your subconscious reality. So, yes. Um, and so you could be great at every other area, but you have one hang up in one area of your life. In this thing, I feel like a failure. You have predetermined the destination in that endeavor. In essence, I could be great at work, but I, I believe I'm horrible at relationships. So uh, uh, you, all I ever saw was failed marriages, and so I don't believe marriages can work. Well, that's a predetermined destination. And I know what that destination is. As a coach, I've worked as a coach now for about seven years, been a trader for 13. I know almost exactly what your default location is by observing what's happened in your life so far. In essence, what default destination has your mind, your internal guidance system, your internal satellite navigation system taking you to in the other things you have tried? Or if you have been trading for a while, what are the results of that internal guidance system? If those results have been failure, 
and frustration, and you think that because you give eighty pound a month, seventy nine ninety nine to be precise, we'll give you that penny back as change to Israel Keys Wealth Academy or any other mentor in trading or any other aspect of your life. If you think paying a tuition fee alone to learn technical knowledge alone will change the outcome, you've got another thing coming. And I am not like many of the cowboys out on social media in the trading training space. There's not, I don't, there's no amount of technical information we can teach you that will compensate for a wrong internal reality. And so one of the things that your tuition fee gets you here or your ju or just the stuff the free stuff we put out on YouTube is we're trying to rework your internal reality and reprogram that satellite navigation system. All right, let's keep it running. So according to the Wikipedia, a mindset now is a set of assumptions, methods, or notions held by one or more people or groups of people that arises out of your worldview or your philosophy of life. It usually becomes so firmly established that it literally determines your behavior, your choices, and your tools. In essence, I know what mindset you have by how you respond to certain circumstances. Mindsets form mental inertia, groupthink, culture. No amount of intellectual argument or teaching or training can overcompensate for the fixed mindset of an individual concerning the thing. In simple English, if you are wired to fail, no amount of technical information will help you succeed. If you are wired to procrastinate and to run away from challenges, no amount of technical information will get you to place a trade. On the other hand, if you are wired to be indisciplined and not to check your stop loss and your take profit and not to make sure you've done your analysis correctly, no amount of technical information will stop you from taking stupid trades. As a mentor, as a teacher, I need to work first on your mind before I feed it stuff. The Christian Bible puts it this way. There's a verse in the Bible that says, be careful how you hear. We live in a world today that is so polarized and divided politically and culturally that you can, you can read the exact same news article as someone else and see two different things. That's how the mindset works. And no amount of argument will convince the other person any different from the assumption or the, or the position they have arrived at because you're approaching that from two different mindsets. Let me tell you a little bit, five minutes or less, about my personal journey. I, come from a, I came from a family that I wouldn't call us poor initially, but we weren't very wealthy. And then along the way, things got real bad. Uh, uh, my, my father, had, my stepdad had to leave the house and my mother had to raise, uh, well, four of her own children. But we were about nine in total, including my stepbrothers and sisters, uh, on a shoestring budget. And that shoestring snapped. So basically, I grew up poor. Not poor, poor. Po is poor without the O-R. <laughs> because when you're real po, you don't have options. So you can't say, I want chicken or fish. I want rice or peas. <laughs> when you're po, <laughs> you don't have an option. So it's P-O, delete the O-R. And that formed some horrible mindsets where I was concerned. Yeah, Monica, po. Anybody else in the comment section grew up po? So that form, I developed a very horrible mentality or, or relationship with money uh, emotionally. I developed a mentality that money was for other people other than me. Money was difficult to come by. Money had to be saved because you never knew when the next penny was coming. And as I became an adult, it created some horrible realities. Uh... I, I told some stories at the conference this week. I'm not going to repeat because I want you guys to think I'm a nice man. I was very vulnerable there about how I put my family, I mean my wife and my children, through some very horrible experiences early on in our life. 
But by the time my children were born, I kind of started dealing with this mindset. But my wife, in the first few years of our marriage, suffered through some horrible experiences with me simply because I had a poverty or failure mentality. I was, I, I've always been a speaker. I've always been a trainer. I felt I am good at this. But making money, not so much. I told myself, I don't know how to sell. I don't know how to market. I don't know. You know, it just, and it, my life became a horrible recycle, a horrible cycle of starting, failing, running away in shame and having to start again. Both where money was concerned, but also where business was concerned. I had the mindset of an employee. Clock in, work hard, and get a paycheck. But when I was left to my own devices to create my own sources of income, I froze. And I could tell you story after story after story of how my internal reality kept pulling me back down. I was very gifted. I was very learned. I was very informed. I taught other people to do better than I did in several endeavors, but put me on the hot seat and I would freeze and come back down to the level of my subconscious reality because what I didn't realize is my default location in that satellite navigation system was either mediocrity or failure. I was the guy who would try anything. So unlike some people, I always tried. If I, I tried impulsively. I tried things I shouldn't have tried. I really took the time to do my due diligence because I was programmed to be impulsive. But once in, I wasn't programmed to go all the way and succeed. Until about six years ago, five, six years ago, when everything began to change. And it's interesting that around the same time as my mindset in my entire spectrum of endeavor began to shift, that was roughly the same time that my experience trading foreign exchange and other financial markets changed for the better. In the words of the Chinese proverb, when the student is ready, the master will appear. When I had the right mindset to succeed, opportunities and discoveries, some from mentors, some from just studying charts, and the markets myself, once my internal reality had arrived at success, it found a way to orchestrate my external reality to breathe the same success. And speaking about that, we come to the next section. We're going to talk about the two minds. Every human being has, according to psychologists, two minds. You have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Think of them as computers. They process information. So they have a processor. They store information. It's called memory, both in a computer and you. Right? And they have an operating system. The operating system is, well, in a Mac, it's, it's iOS. In a, uh, no, 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 Mac, it's, uh, what am I saying now? It's, it's Mac OS. In a in a in a in a iPhone, it's iOS. In a in an Android phone, it's Android. In in Windows, it's Windows. Whatever it is, it's a set of logic codes, a a set of logic written by codes that tells the system how to process what you give it. It has a graphical interface, which is what we would call our life. Your results in life, your results in trading, your results in business, your results in education, your results in marriage, your results in relationships, your results in your career and your fulfillment, whatever it is you do, are the screen, the monitor, the LCD, the LED panel that shows you what the program's doing. But the actual program is the mind. If I didn't like what was showing on my computer screen right now and I threw a brick through it, what would you say to me? If I, if I smashed my monitor because I didn't like the fact that it was currently saying the two minds, you'd call me crazy because the problem's not the monitor. The problem is the operating system that is feeding off a memory and a processor that is showing on the screen. All your life is, your results in 
any field of endeavor are simply the monitor. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Don't shoot the messenger, ask to speak to the boss. Don't smash your monitor, change your, comp your computing system. And so you have a memory. It, it pulls, it, it, it stores everything that's ever happened to you, you've ever done. But that memory is dependent on a processor. The power of that processor determines how quickly stuff is pulled off the memory and the logic into the screen. But there is an operating system that harnesses the power of the processor, the speed and the power of the processor, and interprets the memory or the information that computer is fed using a set of logic. That operating system is your mind. And it's divided into two. There is a conscious mind with which you make conscious decisions. It's what works when you are aware of what you're doing, saying, and acting. But there is a subconscious underneath the conscious. And psychologists tell us, psychiatrists agree, that your, if, your subconscious, if your conscious mind sorry, was a computer, your subconscious mind is at least anywhere between 100 and 1,000 times more powerful. In essence, your subconscious mind is far quicker, more extensive, and more dominant than your conscious mind. When something reaches the subconscious, the conscious mind is powerless to fight it. This is where habits are formed. This is where routines are formed. If you've ever left your house and were driving somewhere that was close to a church or workplace or somewhere you went to regularly, if it's happened to you before, put your hand up in the comment section. Halfway through the journey, you switch off and you end up at the place you go to regularly not the place that you really wanted to go to, which is just around the corner. Because your subconscious mind has taken over the processing. Computers work this way. It's called a cache. Or sometimes a cookie on a website. It says, we know what you always do when you, when you log onto this site. We know what you always do when you open this program. Rather than go through the trouble of consciously processing it, we're going to follow a predetermined loop to get to where we believe you always want to get to when you start this. Are you, are you following this? The human mind was not designed. Let me say this. I said this this week. I'll repeat. It wasn't primarily designed to store information. It was designed to process information, either in creativity or in reflection. Let me repeat. The human mind was designed to process information, not to store it. You process information, right, by either being creative, in essence, you are creating a desired future in your mind, or you are reflecting on a previous occurrence. Free coaching tip here. Stop trying to store information. Get a notepad and a pen. The sharpest mind is duller than the dullest pencil. Is an old proverb. You aren't designed to remember disparate pieces of information. You were designed to process information that you stored elsewhere. Free your mind up for creativity and for reflection. And stop overclogging it with trying to hold theoretical pieces of information. Invest in a library and a notepad. When I hire people, I want I, I, I'm hiring their capacity to find information and interpret it and use it profitably, not their capacity to remember it. Let me repeat this. When I hire you, either as an employee or a contractor, I don't care how much you remember, I care how much you can find. And how much information you can use. So whether you have it in your brain. Or you have it written down in a book in your library. I don't care. I just care that you can use it correctly. 
That's why the most intelligent kids in school are rarely ever the most successful in real life. Because being able to store information is useless in and of itself. All right, let's begin to wrap this up. And so, what happens over the course of your life is, things that repeat often... Your brain shifts them out of your conscious, because like I said, your conscious, I should have said this, your conscious mind is designed to be creative and reflective, to process information. So your brain moves regular occurrences from the conscious realm to the subconscious realm. It says, if this is what you always do in this circumstance, it becomes a subconscious reflex. At that point, literally only God can help you. If every time you face a challenge, you run away, it's moved from a conscious choice to a subconscious choice. And now you have no choice in the matter. Every time you meet a challenge, you freeze because your subconscious mental habit loop kicks in and says, run away. If every time you start something, you don't succeed at it, it becomes a subconscious reality. And trading will be no different. Mm-hmm. If every time you have rules to follow, you break them, it becomes a subconscious reality. If every time you should be disciplined, you are indisciplined, it becomes a subconscious reality. If every time you need to keep to a set time of the day to do something, you find a way to procrastinate, it will become a subconscious reality. All the technical knowledge in the world will not beat the power of your subconscious mind. So alas, what shall we do? I'm glad you asked. What I've just defined is the law of attraction. It means who you are on the inside will pull itself in your external environment. Simple. Your processor, your operating system, and your memory bank will create what's on the screen. That's the law of attraction. If you don't like what's on the screen, don't fight the screen. Fight what's the inside. We've, talk, we've talked about that already. So let's now, now the question now is how do you hack your subconscious mind? Well, this is where it gets. It's where you're getting you're getting 150 pounds an hour of my time coaching high performance people at a minimum. That's my starting rate. If you want me to coach you personally as a high performance person, my starting rate's 150 pounds an hour. That's starting. Depends on what you want from me. Let me give you 150 pounds an hour worth. Of free stuff. Your emotions are the language of your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind speaks to you in emotions. And you can only talk back to it in emotions. When you feel anger, fear, frustration, joy, fulfillment, happiness. This is your subconscious mind telling you something. The same way your conscious mind speaks in language. In, in English or French or whatever it is you Spanish. Whatever you speak. Your subconscious mind talks to you through emotions. And so to understand what it's saying, you first need to police your emotions. Secondly, you need to be careful about engineering emotions because the emotions you engineer bypass your conscious mind and are written on this subconscious plane. If I want to change the destination of your subconscious sat-nav, in a nutshell, I need to engineer experiences for you that write positive outcomes on your subconscious. Let me repeat. The only way I can harness the power of my subconscious mind is to, in, what's the word I'm looking for now? Intentionally engineer experiences, circumstances, and realities that are designed to create successful sensations. Are you listening to me? I need to intentionally write success on the tables of my heart and hold it there long enough. And it will be painful because... Your subconscious mind will tell you, we don't succeed, we fail. We don't make money, we're poor. We don't do well, we're always rejected. We don't keep relationships, we're always rejected. It will tell you what it's been told all your life. 
until you replace the content of it by engineering experiences and emotions designed to correct it. This is not mumbo jumbo. This literally changed my life and the lives of many others I've worked with. And this is one of the reasons that we are so excited about our Wealth Academy because we're not just giving you PDFs to go study and videos to go watch. We're bringing you into an inner circle, to a tribe, right? To a mastermind group, to an environment that breeds positive success. Giving you access to people who have succeeded so that you can be rubbed off on by their internal reality. Now, let's really bring this in. How much time have we got? How much time have we got? Cool, we got about 10 minutes. That's good. Let's use five minutes and bring this in. So when you're developing a, a new reality or new mindset in your subconscious, you got three layers to this. There's a comfort layer, which is where you always are. We all start from comfort in changing our mindset. A comfort level means my subconscious mind is not necessarily being challenged. What I'm dealing with, what I'm being exposed to is within my normal reality. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was sharing with my wife um, just this afternoon, this evening, we went to view a property, uh, a property that we want to buy. Now, it's in the burbs, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's in the suburbs. You know, that's the uh, the American dream, isn't it? Well, although we live in the UK, you know, to make enough money to move away from everybody. <laughs> isn't it funny how the more wealthy or successful we become, the more isolated we want to be. Uh, when we're so-called poor, we live in places where you walk out your door and you see 10 people. And as you make more money, you want to get to a place where you only see two. Then you want to get to a place where you're behind a fence. And then you put a wall behind the fence and a door behind the wall. And and while I think it's a bit uh, dysfunctional, it's just the way it is. And so we drove a little while out of town to go view this property that we really loved. And as we were coming back to where we currently live, it struck us. And I said something to my wife. I said... A year and a half ago, we moved here. And when we came here for the first time, our old neighborhood, when I drove back to my old neighborhood after a week of living where I live now, I couldn't recognize it. I thought, how was I comfortable here? It looked so, so, you know, what's what I'm looking for now? So run down. I, it was like driving out of heaven into purgatory, not hell, just into purgatory, you know? And I said, I now feel the same way. Where we're coming from makes where we're living now look like where, where we used to live looked when we went back for the first time after moving because we had moved from comfort to stretch. Now, the stretch zone is a place where your subconscious reality says, we're not used to this. 70% of all lottery winners die broke. Did you know that? You can give money to a man, you wouldn't make him rich. Or wealthy, I should say. If he was poor before you gave him a million dollars, he'll be poor while he has the million dollars. And by the time he's done with the million dollars, he'll be poor again. Because his habits, his disciplines, his choices will be governed by an internal reality that has a gravitational pull more powerful than the amount of money in his bank account. I can give you, I, I can give you a signal service that gives you 10 successful trades out of every 11 and you may not still become a good trader because your habit loop, your internal reality will sabotage the systems or the strategies. You'll find a way to lose a trade you should have won. You'll win nine trades leveraging properly and then lose the tenth one leveraging ten times what you leveraged for the other nine because you now believe you have the, the golden pot. This is why we start by teaching you psychology and teaching you um, uh, money management and risk management. We're trying to hack your mindset. We're trying to make you a successful trader before you learn about a candlestick. Because that's more important. 
And so when you're in stretch, you're exposed to something you're not comfortable with. It's painful, it's stretching, it's uncomfortable. But if you hold that stretch long enough, it becomes your new comfort level. True story. The first time as an adult, well, I didn't, but of course I was an adult when this happened because when I was a child, uh, I didn't have my own money. The first time I ever saw 300 pound in my bank account in one time was in the year 2001. I'll never forget. Uh, I went to my ATM, 2001, and a combination of a part-time job I was working uh, while studying for a master's degree and a gift uh, from a family member meant that there was about almost 400 pounds in my bank account at the same time. I was so stretched and so bamboozled that I went to the ATM to withdraw 20 pounds when I saw it and I forgot my 20 pound note in the ATM. <laughs> because it blew my mind. 400 pounds in one place or 380 something in one place was more than I could bear. And you know what happened? Soon there wasn't 300 pounds. I was used to seeing roughly 100 pounds in my bank account. And over the next week or so, it came down to a. I can't remember what I spent the money on, but there was a subconscious reality that says we don't have 400 pounds in one place. This was 19 years ago. I've come a long way. Trust me. Hey, I trust me. I've come a long way now. Now I spend 400 pounds. But then that was my life's worth. And I was so excited. I forgot 20 pounds in an ATM or cash register, like you all say, in some parts of the world. It's the same with success. That's why some people cannot sustain it. They can hit it once or twice here and there, but they have an unworthy mentality. It's foreign. It's not new. Or it's not. It's it's new, and so they subconsciously downgrade back to failure or mediocrity. The third level is stress. Stress is what happens when you try to change your mindset too fast, too soon. And what should be positive change releases cortisol and adrenaline and makes you afraid and gives you anxiety and it is damaging. And it ends up destroying the positive value or positive benefits of the stretch. And everybody has a stretch slash stress boundary. Listen to your internal mind when it says, I can't handle any more and pull back just a little bit. Now, we spoke about engineering positive emotions. If there was no stress zone, all I would need to do is tell you, go borrow, go get a loan for a million pounds and live like a millionaire for a year. Literally, this is the place, the next step, the place of mentors and coaches. The job of a mentor or coach, and we're coaches and mentors here at Digital Keys Wealth Academy, is to help you engineer not just technical information, not just give you practical skills, but to engineer a mindset for you, give you access to an environment that breeds internal success. Well, I could say go borrow a million pounds and splash the cash for a year, and it'll create a world mindset. However, it will move you from comfort to stress and have a counterproductive mentality. You will end up poorer than you were before, now in debt. And so you do it gradually. You meditate. You visualize. This is where confession comes in. What you say is useless outside the reality of what you see internally. It is only the confessions made from a place of visualization and of arriving at your destination internally that actually carry power. And so my job as a coach and a mentor is to work with you, to hold you accountable for the way you think, to create a success mindset. And I can't do that in 45 minutes. I can do it over 12 months. Uh, and like I've said to, to, to you guys, not only am I a successful financial trader, I'm also a successful executive high-performance coach. And I bring that coaching mindset of a teacher and a trainer into training our students at our academy. But whether or not it's me or one of our instructors here, wherever you go to learn how to trade, and there's great people out there, 
I'm not arrogant enough to believe that we're the only people who can teach you correctly. No. There's plenty of great people out there that you can learn from who are just as gifted, just as skilled. But if it's missing the component of mindset training, it will not work. If I train your mind to succeed, you'll figure out how to trade. If I train you to trade alone, your mindset will figure out how to sabotage your learning. And our job is to hold you in stretch long enough until what was stretch yesterday becomes comfort today. So my new, my, so my current, uh, my current neighborhood was stretch 18 months ago. It's now comfort. I now have a new stretch and there'll be another one and another one. It works the same way. You need to stretch your subconscious mind until it is comfortable, one, being a trader and two, being successful. So in summary, our job is you will become a trade or you will trade successfully when you, you internally carry the mindset of a trader. There are habits to trading. There are disciplines to trading. There are ways successful traders think. So we first of all need to get you thinking like a trader and then thinking success and then you will be a successful trader. And the technical stuff will just naturally fall into place. Now, I could go on and on and on about this. But like I said, all we had is an hour. And we've come to the end of that hour. And this, ladies and gents, is my gift to you this week. Go watch or listen to this recording several times over. Until it moves into your subconscious reality. And ask yourself, where is my natural sat nav set to? What's my default position of expectation? in the things that I engage with, especially trading. And could this explain why I don't do so well? And if you come to that conclusion, find a mentor slash a coach. Find somebody who's succeeding and get them to help you one, figure out that mindset, but secondly, for their mindset to rub off on you. Of course, I would love myself and the, the folks down here at Israel Keys Wealth Academy, we would love to be that person for you. Uh, uh, and the million dollar question is how? Well, uh, first of all, this is what our program here looks like. As you can see, there is equal value or priority given to both technical training and tools, but also to mentorship, psychology and mindset coaching and personal mentorship. And so you get two for the price of one. You get to learn what trading entails while being coached to think like a trader and a successful person. Is there a financial cost to it? Yes, it is. If you get in over the next month or so, we have a few uh, a limited amount of spaces left. You can get in right now at £79.99 a month. Why? Because we're beta testing our system. We're still working out some of the kinks in our, in our course delivery and our customer service experience. We want you to give us feedback on, on how to make it even better. We want you to help us design a world-class, smooth, uh, 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 oper uh, operation of delivery and in in return for your helping us do that we are knocking off 50 percent of the regular price when this is ready to go live fully when all when all the beta testing is done this will be roughly double the price that it is uh how do you get in touch with us well i'm glad you asked 
Uh, someone said to me earlier today that, um, well, I'm going to paraphrase what they said. Success loves speed. Uh, so don't don't overthink this. Do chew on it. Do think about it, but don't spend a year figuring this out. Move quickly. Follow your gut. If on first uh, first first what's the word now? First perusal, you believe that this is something that you need. Send us an email to Israel Keys Group. That's misspelled. That should say Israel Keys Group. Um, send us an email to Israel Keys Group at Gmail dot com. Israelkeysgroup at gmail.com or a telegram or WhatsApp to this number floating on your screen. This video will be available for you to come back to once the live is over. It's going to be left up on our YouTube channel. So either Israelkeysgroup at gmail.com, that's Israelkeysgroup at gmail.com, or send a WhatsApp, preferably a telegram, we'd prefer it by telegram. To plus four four seven four seven six seven one five six seven zero, and say, hey, I want to learn to be successful, especially as a financial trader. If you go to the web, the YouTube channel now, you'll see all kinds. We've been told by several people that the free stuff here on this channel on YouTube is far more valuable than many courses that charge you thousands of pounds. Well, our students will tell you some of them in the comment section that the non-free stuff is ten times better. Uh, and even if you don't want to take up on it, that's fine. We want to give you every Sunday at 9 15 p.m. BST. I'm going to be here uh, with the Traders Lounge also. We're going to be, uh, we post from time to time uh, some of our coursework, course material, uh, the non exclusive parts of it here. Uh, there's plenty, there's about 70 videos, about almost over 70 hours of content, more than enough to get you started. And so like this channel or like this video, please share it, Make drop a comment, not just in the live comments, but also after it's done and subscribe uh, to be notified when we drop more content. For instance, every week on a Sunday when the Traders Lounge is live, you want to know, subscribe, please. Uh, and let somebody else know that this is the best kept secret in the trading sphere. All right, guys, this has been Israel. Tonight, we've been talking about building or developing a success mindset. Uh, again, please drop, drop a like, share, or dislike if you don't like what I've said. Please do let me know by dropping a dislike as well. That's fine. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section, both live and afterwards. Uh, share this and subscribe. And I will see you next week. Same time, same YouTube platform for another edition of the Traders Lounge. Uh, registered students, you know the drill. Uh, make sure your telegram set to deliver notifications for signals, analysis, uh, announcements, and notifications of when we have our closed forum sessions. Everybody have a great week from everybody here at Israel Keys Wealth Academy. Take care and bye-bye.